Mira Bahadur Singh is live in Manitoba tonight at the side of the Trans-Canada Highway with more on the stabbing death and subsequent decapitation of a passenger on a Greyhound bus. Mira, first of all, is well, there anything new on the investigation to report? Well, the details are limited at this time. The investigation is still ongoing. Now, I don't know if you can see behind me, but the bus has stayed in the exact same spot since 8.30 last night, and investigators are on scene combing the area for details. All we do know is that the man responsible for the attack, a 40-year-old, is in custody right now. Mira, it's hard to talk about the mood in a situation like this, but how are the surrounding communities, police officers investigating, coping with this horrific, horrific crime? Well, anyone that we've talked to today is still in shock. As you heard about the details, it was a nightmarish situation. The witnesses on the bus still can't believe what happened. And the details involved, you know, everyone is still trying to wrap their head around everything. Uh, police officers on, were on scene early this morning, and everyone is going to get trauma counseling to help deal with such a bloody situation. It's difficult for even a reporter to cover stories like this. <laughs> I know. In Global Winnipeg, we cover a lot of crime. We're sort of known as the homicide capital of Winnipeg. But this is one that, you know, shook even veterans to the core. So we're still trying to wrap our heads around it, and we'll bring more details as they come available. All right. Thank you. Mira Bahadu Singh live in Manitoba tonight. Thank you for joining us, Mira. And indeed, it is hard for any of us to imagine what we would do if we found ourselves on that same Greyhound bus. Tonight, a witness takes us through those horrifying moments. Here's Garnet Catton's account of what happened. He got on the bus. He sat in the front very calmly, somewhere in the front, put his stuff away, didn't say a word to anybody. Uh, the bus continued on for, I'd say, another half an hour, and we stopped for a cigarette break. He got out smoked cigarette casually I think he talked a little bit with another girl that was there and when he got on the bus this time he, he came right back to the back and sat next to the victim who was right behind me and put his things above in the, the overhead there and sat down um, he didn't say anything to the victim the victim was just uh, sleeping with his headphones on he was leaning against the window sleeping you know doing his own little thing he wasn't bothering the guy I didn't hear any words at all exchanged between the two. Uh, I didn't see the guy, the attacker, talk to anybody else but, but the one girl there. So I started reading my book again. Uh, probably 20 minutes later, all of a sudden, we all heard this scream, a blood-curdling scream, like uh, just hair-raising. We turned around and looked, and uh, I thought it was a fist fight at first. The one guy was standing up, and, you know, there was arms were flailing and stuff like that. And uh, But then I saw the guy had a big... Rambo knife, a uh, hunting knife, and it was covered in blood, and he was, he, he just kept going at the guy. It was like it was a robot, though. He, the guy had, you know, he wasn't screaming at the guy, or he wasn't in a rage. It was just very calmly killing the guy. Um, the other guy was screaming bloody murder. Uh, when I knew what was going on, I, I ran up as close as I could to the front of the bus and screamed at the driver, stop the bus, okay, there's somebody getting stabbed, everybody get off the bus now, now. Uh, a lot of people didn't, you know, understand the urgency of what was going on. A lot of people were still sleeping and stuff like that. So it was a big crowd at the door trying to get out while everyone's staring at this guy getting getting stabbed to death. Uh, we eventually all got out, uh, moved to the back of the bus. Me and uh, the Greyhound driver and uh, a trucker that had stopped, see seeing people running out of the bus, figured there was trouble. He stopped and he came out with a pry bar and some other weapons, I guess, and. Uh, the three of us entered the bus to, to see if, if the victim was still alive or if there was something that we could do, what was going on in there, and uh, we saw the guy was over top of him and he was clearly cutting the guy's head off. So he turned around at that point and saw us looking at him. Uh, he started moving toward us. We all jumped off the bus. The three of us jumped off the bus and the, the bus driver tried to shut the door, but the guy was already at the door before that and he was slashing at us. He had his hands out the door. He was trying to pry the door open. And uh, I was sitting there holding the door shut while this, you know, he's slashing at us and the, the driver's trying to push the, the button closed. Uh, yeah, the attacker ended up getting a good push in there and pushed back and his arm came out too far. The, the both of us ran around the bus and uh, came back around again. We didn't want to lose sight of him, so uh, looked under the bus to see if his feet were there. And... Um, he wasn't there, so he was still on the bus. So we ran up, pushed the the, the, the closed door. He was stuck on the bus. Uh, 
three of us sat there against the door, you know, waiting for him to come out. He kept coming to the front and trying to push the buttons to, to get out. He he went into the, the driver's seat and it looked like he was starting the bus. We yelled at the bus driver, you know, he's going he's gonna to take off in the bus. So the, the bus driver disabled it somehow. I'm not sure how he did it, but uh, he came back and said, yeah, he's not going anywhere. Uh, at that point, we were still all guarding the door and we watched him go back, return back to the victim. Uh, we went around to the front of the bus to see what was going on and uh, he, that's when he, he brought the head up and, and he came right calmly right towards us with the knife in one hand and the head in the other. And the three of us were just standing there in shock like, and he just calmly looked at us with sunglasses on dropped the head in front of us like it was no big deal. Very disturbing details and uh, lots of fallout to this, this story tonight.